How's it going everyone? It is Panjano here and in today's video we're going to be showing you guys how to configure, set up and enable AMD's FSR or Fidelity FX Super Resolution technology on both AMD Radeon graphics cards and Nvidia GeForce cards. The AMD FSR or Fidelity FX Super Resolution, AMD's direct competitor towards Nvidia's proprietary DLSS technology. Unlike Nvidia DLSS, AMD's FSR technology does not require any specific or special hardware and will run on pretty much all modern graphics hardware out there, all the way down from AMD Ryzen based Based APUs all the way down to NVIDIA GTX graphics cards. There are fantastic performance gains to be got across the board to not only improve visual fidelity in some cases, but by having the potential to also double your FPS instantly with a few clicks of a button. The software is completely free, easy, and simple to set up, and you'd be silly not to use this. So if you guys do enjoy this video and are happy with your results from this video, please leave a like as it does help me out tremendously, and let me know of any questions, queries, suggestions, or which games you're excited to see FSR come to in the future in the comment section down below, as it is always for fantastic to hear from you guys and if you guys do enjoy content like this and wish to stay up to date with the channel please do remember to hit that subscription button alongside the bell notification where you'll then be notified instantly whenever new content goes live on the channel in the future. I thought it would be best to show you guys some direct comparisons of before and after using the Fidelity FX Super Resolution on a plethora of different hardware ranging from AMD RX 6000 graphics cards, Nvidia RTX 3000 series graphics cards and also Ryzen APUs and also GTX mobile chips. Just to show you some examples of how visual fidelity is pretty much not affected whatsoever and the performance gains which are on hand. So let's move straight on into the video. FSR doesn't actually require a new driver on either Nvidia or AMD Radeon based graphics cards but in the future with more further in-depth implementations of FSR depending on when you're watching this video we're going to be updating our GPU driver just to ensure that we have the latest fixes and optimizations to ensure that we do get the best results possible. For those of you running on Radeon based graphics whether that be a standalone GPU or an APU whether that be mobile or desktop never get inside of the description down below where you'll be finding the amd.com support page. With inside of here you'll be able to then go ahead and simply scroll down, select graphics on the left hand side, scroll down and find the series of GPU or APU in which you need the graphics driver for. For me that's going to be the Radeon 6000 series and I'm using a 6700 series GPU and selecting my GPU, selecting submit. Then select the Windows version in which you're currently using on your machine, this may be Windows 11 at the time of watching this video, then you'll want to select the driver which is found at the top of this page, go ahead and click on the download button. Once the file has finished downloading, with inside of here go ahead and click the install button. Once the the installer has finished extracting, the main installation page will then open up and look very similar to this. Navigate to the bottom right hand side, then select install. Now do bear in mind, during the driver installation process, the display may flicker a few times, have different colours, could change resolution a few times and maybe even turn on or off. Don't panic, just simply wait for the driver installation to finish and all of those issues will be completely resolved. Once the driver is finished installing, you'll then be prompted to do a quick system restart just to make sure that everything can boot up correctly and you'll then 100% be running on the latest driver. We can then go ahead once again, right click on the desktop, this time open up inside of the AMD Radeon software panel. Now at the time of recording this video you don't currently have to enable any features with inside of the AMD Radeon driver to enable FSR with inside of games. But in the future as developments come there may be a toggleable feature with inside of the AMD Radeon software panel and if that feature ever does come about you will more than likely find it under the gaming tab under global graphics. Then on the left hand side if you do happen to find any AMD FX super resolution options or FSR options with inside of here make sure to turn them on. But for now we can simply go ahead and exit out and move on to the next step. Next thing we need to do is to find a game which is compatible with AMD's FSR technology. At the moment of the time of recording this video, the technology has just launched, so the game compatibility list is rather small, but in the near future there are going to be a ton of games which have already got support listed for AMD FSR technology, alongside tons of game developers and publishers who are going to be utilising and publishing the technology as well, such as Valve and other big name companies. Again, I will link a compatibility list in the description down below, but do check out AMD's socials for any updates on the near future for compatible games or updates to current games which are out and when those updates are due to release. The two games I'm going to be showcasing this on in this video are going to be Terminator Resistance and also Riftbreaker. Boot into an AMD FSR compatible game, simply take yourself to the escape menu whether that be whilst in game or at the main menu, navigate over to the options menu and we're then going to be looking for any video tabs which are available to you. In Terminator Resistance we can then find the option labelled Fidelity FX Super Resolution 1.0. Again at the time of recording this video this is the latest version of the software or depending on the game in which you're playing this may be titled FSR, AMD FSR, or AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution. With inside of the game you should then have the option for Ultra Quality, Quality, Balanced, Performance, 
and off. These options are going to change the internal resolution of the game quite drastically and how aggressively the upscaling needs to be. Obviously, the higher quality preset you're going to use, the better the image quality will be, but the lower the performance gain you will see. So at this current part of the game, I'm getting 154 frames per second, running on a mixture of medium to high settings on this game, just to give myself a more realistic frame rate. Simply taking ourselves over to the Fidelity FX Super Resolution option and switching this over to Ultra Quality, which is the highest option available with Inside Affair, taking ourselves back into the main scene, as you can see now we're getting 210 frames per second, roughly 55 FPS more than in the previous scene, with practically no visual loss and in some departments even a visual gain, which is a fantastic result to see, especially from a more than capable graphics card already from changing one setting which will have practically no visual difference whatsoever. As you can see with inside of this game on my current setup, the GPU is being stressed at 99 to 100% usage all of the time. So the more GPU bound the game or the scene in which you are in is, will depend on how far those performance gains will be. So as you can see, now we're getting 208 frames per second, heading into the options menu, navigating over and changing this to the quality mode, applying that, going back with the start of the game, as you can now see we're getting 215 to 220. Again, this is a more than acceptable quality to look at, the image still looks very sharp, but that is because I'm running this at 4K. Depending on the resolution in which you're using, you'll be able to find a list of resolutions and what settings you should set for those resolutions on the left hand side of the screen now. Of course you could be playing at 1080p and even go with the performance mode, but your image quality is going to suffer drastically and the game will almost become unplayable. So my recommended settings can be found on the left hand side of the screen now, regardless of what game you're playing. Or the hardware in which you're running on. If you're playing at that resolution, those are the settings to use. It's also worth noting that going lower than the quality mode may not actually equal better performance regardless of the hardware in which you're running on. As the lower the setting for FSR is, the less the GPU is going to be stressed, increasing the game's CPU load. So you might actually find that going lower than quality mode in some cases may not even give you more performance even though you are lowering that internal resolution. I've now set up another scenario to display what it's going to be like for those of you that are running on low settings who want the best FPS possible from every game in which you play. As you can see here, I'm currently running at 4K this time, but I now have every single game setting with inside of the game set to the lowest possible setting. As you can see in this same scene, we're getting about 190 frames per second. Pressing escape, we can then go to the options menu. We can then turn on Fidelity FX Super Resolution. We go with ultra quality, select apply, and as you can see, we're able to get 235 to 240 frames, again in a 40 to 50 FPS increase, even at low settings. Showing that even if you are a gamer who typically likes to turn up most of the eye candy, and have a fantastic looking game and frame rate comes second, or if you're a gamer like myself who likes to crank down every single setting possible to get the best, most fluid gameplay experience possible, there are still drastic gains to be had from using this simple setting. Now moving on to Rift Breaker. As you can see with inside of here, in this scene we're getting about 190 frames per second again. Pressing escape, we can then go to the options menu, this time navigating down to settings. Under settings, we're then going to go to graphics on the left hand side. You'll then be able to see the Fidelity FX Super Resolution option with inside of here. This time we're running the game at 2560 by 1440. Heading over to the Fidelity FX Super Resolution mode, selecting Ultra Quality to start out with the best setting possible, selecting Confirm, then going ahead and selecting Back. Again, with inside of the exact same scene, we're able to achieve 232 plus frames per second, which is a gain of roughly 40 frames per second, just from simply enabling that one option. We can take ourselves back with inside of the options once again and try out the lower quality modes to see what further gains are available with inside of here. So once again, Graphics, Fidelity FX Super Resolution, Quality, Confirm. Back with inside of the game, this time we're able to get 260 frames per second. You would be silly not to use this option in any game that supports it. Now at 1440p, if I was to go any lower than this setting, I would start to see a drastic drop in visual fidelity. And for those of you that are somewhat in the know of how Nvidia's proprietary DLSS technology works, that is based on a temporal upscaling technology. Meaning that when you're moving around, you can see ghosting artifacts, especially around edges of fast moving objects. AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution does not work in this manner, so you will not see any ghosting or smearing of objects in the distance or close up if they're fast moving regardless of the games in which you're playing. So in high motion scenarios, AMD's FSR can actually beat Nvidia's DLSS. In some cases, with games such as Dota 2 which has just received support for AMD FSR, navigating to the settings menu whilst inside of game, navigating over to the video tab, you'll find Fidelity FX Super Resolution found with inside of the game. Now for most of you watching this video, this option will more than likely be blanked out and not be available to use. That is because you do need to actually manually set the render resolution quality yourself from a percentage basis. On the right hand side there'll be a basic graph showing you which quality preset equals what percentage setting. So with inside of Dota just simply set the percentage to match on the right hand side. Once your percentage has been set the Fidelity FX Super Resolution option should then become selectable. Turning it on and off very quickly you should be able to see a very noticeable difference especially to the foliage on the left hand side where a Fidelity FX now turned on, off, 
on, off. As you can see, that's making a big difference, even using 77%. Obviously, depending on how low you want to go with the rendering quality, will drastically change how the image looks and the performance in which you're getting. But you do have this very handy slider where you can simply go all the way down to the left-hand side, all the way up to the right, and see any changes you're making in real time. Now, as mentioned earlier on in the video, this technology is compatible with both AMD and NVIDIA-based products. This is the PC which has my RTX 3080 graphics card installed to it. Task Manager will show you under the performance section that this PC is in fact running an RTX 3080. So we're roughly at the same scene in which we were at with the RX 6700 AMD Radeon based graphics card, but we're now in fact actually using an NVIDIA RTX 3080. And as you can see at this scene, we're getting roughly 175 to 170 frames per second. Going ahead and pressing escape, navigating down to the options menu, finding the Fidelity FX Super Resolution option once again, we're going to start off using the ultra quality mode, selecting apply, backing out, and as you can see, we're getting 220 to 230 frames per second, an even bigger jump on the NVIDIA card than we had on the AMD card. Proving that the software hasn't been manipulated in any sort of way to give lower results on NVIDIA-based graphics cards, the performance gains can be benefited from regardless of the hardware in which you're running on. We can even go one further and go down to the quality mode, where again we'll see a slight performance increase to about 260 to 270 frames. And you can see we're now getting over 310 frames per second, even at the lowest settings possible with inside of the game, proving that there is percentage scaling across the board regardless of which manufacturer your hardware is from. Now, as we close out the video, I'm also going to be showcasing the performance gains available whilst using AMD FSR technology on an NVIDIA GTX 1650 mobile-based laptop. This also raises a fantastic opportunity to test out AMD Radeon-based APU CPUs available for both desktop and mobile, as the laptop on which we're currently looking at actually equipped with an AMD Ryzen 3550 APU. So even in the worst case scenario on arguably one of AMD's weakest APUs in the product line which is supported by FSR, the only thing from now on I can recommend is to stay on top of all of your graphics card driver updates as and when they're available for both AMD Radeon graphics cards and NVIDIA GeForce cards, to stay on top of any further optimizations which may be coming out for any games or driver compatibility issues which may come up in the future, just to make sure that all of those are ironed out and you are getting the best gameplay experience possible. If unfortunately any of your favorite games currently do not have the AMD FSR upscaling feature or NVIDIA DLSS and you have an NVIDIA NVIDIA card. On games such as Rainbow Six Siege or Fortnite or other popular games, do look out for any TAA upscaling features within the side of those games, as TAA upscaling is pretty good and will help you achieve somewhat similar gains to what AMD's FSR can offer, but this is available in quite a lot of games already. As always guys, thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you have enjoyed this video, please do leave a like as it does help me out tremendously, and if you have any questions, queries, or would just like to shout out your favourite games in which you want to see FSR support come to in that comment section down below, that would be great as it is always fantastic to hear from you guys. And if you guys do enjoy this sort of content, please do consider pressing that subscription button alongside the bell notification. We will then be notified instantly whenever new videos go live on the channel. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this video. I've been Pangino, and I'll see you guys in the next one.